Hussam Belkir and tore downtown Dubai Hotel. Sam, listen, absolute pleasure to sit down with you. Thank you for having us down to Anantara downtown. Thank you for coming. It's good to have you with us. I'd love to start, just for people listening and watching, just to get an understanding of your background in hospitality. We love to hear how people first got into the wonderful world of hospitality and how you uh, ended up with this beautiful property. Okay, well, uh, I'll go quickly backwards if possible. Uh, I was actually, me as a Jordanian national, I was born in Kuwait, middle school in Kuwait, high school in Jordan, and then university in Lebanon. And I studied hotel management and tourism, which was something I really wanted when I was in high school. I liked seeing hotels. I liked seeing how the vibe is, how I feel it's a lot of people business, which I really enjoyed wonderfully. And then uh, I did the hotel uh, management and tourism in uh, university and I went into the hotel business. The shock when I went to the hotel business is, you know, when you graduate from university, you think, you know, I'm Mr. Big Shot. I studied with a degree. And then when I went for my first job, which was the Grand Hyatt in Jordan, I started as a steward. It was like 120 US dollars. That was my first salary. And then I pushed hard, of course, worked hard, loved it, moved uh, around, and here we are. Amazing. Is there any kind of like highlights throughout the career that you look back on as like moments where you maybe got into your first manager? Yeah, of course. Actually, there was one person that I really thank because he um, pushed me for the management training back in the Hyatt, which helped me a lot, which kind of sped up the process. And the highlight for my career for me was that my aim was to be a GM before the age of 40, which I did in a couple of months, but it was still considered before 40. So. I was really happy. That was a that was a big highlight for my achievement. But for uh, as for hotels, it's everywhere. I mean, every country. You know, I worked in Jordan and Qatar and north of Iraq, uh, Oman, Dubai, Abu Dhabi. So it's uh, kind of a roller coaster. But everywhere has its wonderful story, which you know I can explain for a long time. <laughs> Well, we're in Anantara downtown. I'd love to hear a little bit more about the property. We spoke just off camera yeah. a minute ago that you've been with the brand for, for a number of years and that, you know some of my favorite properties. So can you talk us through the last few years with Anantara and then talk us sure. through the, the property we're sitting in? I joined Minor Hotels, which is the mother uh, company of uh, Anantara. I joined them in 2014 in uh, the famous Anantara Casa Sarab, which we discussed with, about. And then in 2016, it was my first GM position and I moved to open our Tivoli Hotel in Qatar. It's called Sukul Wakra by Tivoli. This is one of our other brands and minor hotels. And then I had the opportunity to manage the Anantara Banana Island in Qatar, as well as the Sukul Wakra by Tivoli. So one was a city hotel, one was a resort. So it was a kind of a mix of both, which now I'm going to transfer to Anantara downtown to be a city into Leisure Hotel in the middle of busy Dubai. For anyone who doesn't know Leisure, I know it's a term that the industry has kind of coined Correct. a little bit since Correct. COVID, but can you kind of talk us through what Leisure means to you and the team here? For us, it's business leisure. I mean, what we of course all know, but it's we have a lot of corporate clientele. Again, busy during the day, tired through the day, a lot of talking, a lot of, we want them to relax, unwind, have their proper, spa relaxation if needed, have their proper IV treatment, which we have in the hotel, pool, IV treatment, which goes through a huge menu, which is either it's detox, vitamin, uh, hangover uh, IV. Uh, so there's the everything, hair, nails. So this helps also our corporate clientele bring their spouse partner with them as well, because he can do the business, he or she can relax in the property, re do our lovely spice spoon classes, which is one-on-one -on -one cooking classes with our chef, teach you whatever a la carte menu you'd like. And we have the wonderful Dime by Design, which we do in Anantara. You can either have it on the 26th floor, overlooking Burj Khalifa, or you can have it on the pool, dine exclusive with proper setup and just relaxation. And with pleasure in the industry, we've seen it kind of like traditionally people might stay for one or two nights, but then it'll extend it into the weekend for their leisure part of the business trip. Have you seen since you've started here, like length of stays extend, or is it more people doing more leisure within the two two nights? For no, business? we our guests do 
stay and their length of stays from 2.5 to three nights in our property. But what helps us as being part of minor hotels is the fact that we can combine the fact that the guests can stay, do some business leisure in our property, and go to our other sister properties, which are purely the leisure extension, which combines like they does business before Christmas and connects Christmas to continue all the vacation in our other sister properties in the UAE. Okay, perfect. And within downtown, pretty competitive. Yeah, correct. <laughs> Cool, great. We, we to win. You can see <laughs> there's hotels popping up left, right, and center. I think that will be forever in Dubai. Correct. You know, one, how do you kind of look to differentiate yourself? Two, do you ever like you've got a beautiful kind of property when you drive by it? It's, it's, it does stand out. The beautiful logo, yeah. and name at the front, it really hits you. Visible you logo. By, big traffic lights at the front, which you always get a lot of views. So yeah, just from a competitive standpoint, when you look around hotel. Here, well, we focus on heartfelt hospitality. At the end, as a guest, when you come stay in a hotel, you want something that really makes you remember what happened or you remember your stay. We go through heartfelt hospitality, unforgettable journeys for the guest. And the a very important thing, I believe, is empowerment of the team members. Because some guests may have issues, may have good stuff, may have comments. When you empower your team, when they take the decision on the spot and do what they need to do to make sure things go right, it really does make a difference for the guests. And other than that is we like to talk with the guests, go around with the guests. I, for example, personally handwrite most of the welcome notes for all the guests in the hotel, which, you know, welcome card. I take at least half an hour of my day just to write those cards. It's worth it. And we would continue doing that as long as I can. Amazing. Um, but in terms of uh, the property, it's two years <clears throat> you've taken it over? Correct. One thing I always find fascinating is the difference between a pre-opening when it was built based on the brand values and what the brand is versus kind of taking over a property. And we know this happens a lot yeah. in Dubai with ownership, wanting to bring in new brands. So, you know, I think people are listening and watching would love to know maybe some of the challenges that come from taking over a property that, you know, I don't know how many months the handover was, but, you know, only a little bit a while ago, it was a different brand. Correct. So we took over actually in 24 hours. So it was, you had, you know, like you say, pre-opening. Uh, yeah, you had pre-opening, you have all the months to set up and everything. We had no time. We had to go in directly and we had to hit the ground running. There was no choice. And then we went through our phases of the Anantara phase, which was the full refurbishment of the lobby, full refurbishment of our meeting rooms, which we did, which we, which we gave the Anantara touch. So for example, our lobby now is more, if you go inside the lobby, well, from the entrance, we have our beautiful green walls at the entrance with our logo, with water. You go inside, it's all natural plants. So this is also discussing the pleasure part, which the guest sits in the lobby, coffee, tea, not the traditional industrial look of a hotel, but you know, the greenery, the makes you relax, makes you sit better, talk better and meet, have better meetings. So we're, and we're still going to go through more changes coming up can't explain a lot of them on now until they're official we can come out but there are a lot of changes going to happen do, do rooms have to be done to the, to we were going to go through all the rooms and we're going to go through the ballroom and food and beverage concepts as well which we currently have for, for them but we're going to change a lot but i can't yeah. is that challenging when guests come and maybe they feel they're coming to is there is there a, a feeling of anantaras like there's a specific design or Exactly. They that's why get it when they arrive. Like, is it's that so, it's, that's why we have the storytelling. That's why we say why we do. That's why we tell them we do this. That's why the greenery is there. Yeah. That's why we need to explain and educate our guests. A lot of our guests luckily know an entire brand. And yet we have to explain how it is in the middle of city. We have like our daily sunset ritual, which we do every day with the guests. Some guests really take videos about it. We, we still have all these Anantara touches, you know, amenities are the same. Every, which we have on the property. What are the pros and cons of taking a handover? Like, just explain to me some of the pros and then maybe some of the things that are really challenging. Pros is you may know what you're going to get. Yeah. You may know what you're going to get. It's still getting there with time, but you still kind of have an idea. Cons is the fact you don't know what the guests used to think of what was happening before you took over. So the cons is how to keep the guests maintain the guests, keep make sure the repeat guests are still there, increase the number of nationalities and the business mix we have all around using our minor hotels, 
worldwide and all our GSO offices and all our connections everywhere. So this helps. So the business mix did change because as an Anantara, people know us also. Now we've, we see a very big increase of our South American clientele, which is great. Japanese are picking up, which was not happening before. So these are pros and cons is just to make sure that the guests that were there, we want them to stay there. They're more than welcome. They're still going to be acknowledged, still going to be have the proper service and same service as before. And that 24 hour turnover. So if people had made a booking for days and weeks after yeah. with the old brand, how yeah. did that work? Booking stayed. We had to manually shift it. It's kind of a bit difficult. It's too technical. But the guests woke up, literally checked out with an Antara letterhead. Do you have to email the guests in advance and you We put a letter in the rooms. <laughs> There's difficult to email guests. But we say it's very it's too wow, technical, okay. yeah. Software wise, system wise, room configuration, we have different room namings. So the website took some time. Uh, guests got confused. Some guests saw the then they saw the logo at the building, they're like, but how? You know? The taxi guys. Exactly. Hotels it took scared. actually months for the taxis to stop using the previous name. Literally. So it's okay, it's a fun ride. You you live and learn. So this is, was a learning process. Just can't forget to change the name on Google Maps. Or you're yeah, we, we, so we go because the thing is, these accounts are not with us. Yeah, yeah. So we're, our name is our account. The previous name is we can't manage. Amazing. I'd love to kind of shift it into kind of a word that I feel is sometimes overused by people, but I'm always keen to find out what's the truth behind it, which is the sustainability yep. angle. Yep. And we know, I think, probably all guests now, but especially the, the new generation, they are kind of looking for a more sustainable trip. Is that, is that something that's passionate for you? Well, guys? yes, definitely. As Zanantara as well. For example, now, even though we're a city hotel, we have our uh, hydroponic uh, machine for our lettuce for the hotel. So we use a lot of our own lettuce from our hydroponic uh, machine. Of course, we refrain from plastics as much as possible everywhere, like the amenities, you know, water, pens, pe pencils, uh, key cards for the guests. We're going through the paperless check-in now. Hopefully, by the end of Q2, will be implemented. Um, of course, we, as well as the environment for the water, we install water aerators, energy, fix the guest room management system to make sure that empty rooms have not on full AC. So we try to manage this sustainable. Of course, the environment is very important. And luckily, a lot of people are, my friends usually ask me, what about the guests? I said, luckily, you know, the guests, they're, they're really educated about the said, you know, the guests really care, which is very important. I mean, you do it at home now, you do it everywhere. So it spreads, it's spreading worldwide. It's wonderful. I just find sometimes it's maybe like where is the the blend between sustainability and luxury right because like, yeah I, example i always use is you know when you go into the the bathrooms and uh, for sustainability you put your hand up and a sheet of paper comes up and you put your yeah. hand up and a sheet yeah, of paper correct. comes up and then you go into other bathrooms and you've got the nice towels yeah and i always find the towels to me really scream luxury luxury but it's one and done one and done doesn't mm -hmm. feel super sustainable, but it's way better than the electric sheets. A hundred percent. There are some standards we will not yeah. deviate from. But for example, for like the washing or the towels, like you say, for example, it's like we have our, uh, if you don't, for our linen or for our towels in the rooms, we have a card in the guest room and the guest uh, restrooms or toilets that if you do not want us to wash these linen today, just put the card. So we kind of do that in parallel to, in, instead of like, this machine you're talking about, which we, I, I pretty much really doubt we're ever going to implement. You know what I'm yeah, 100%. Yeah. I agree with you. Because that's like, listen, it leans nicely into guest satisfaction, and ultimately, you know, without guests coming through the doors, the hotel doesn't operate. So, from that perspective, obviously, the fact that you sit down and you handwrite the letters, I'm yep. going to assume you're very keen on guest satisfaction. So, try. Is there like some tactics you've implemented over the last few years here that has seen an improvement, and then maybe how do you track it? Well, um, we do implement. Uh, personal touches, as we say. We really focus on the guest preferences. We have their profiles, if they're repeat guests, we know what they like, what they dislike. So we really make sure we implement all that during their stay. We talk to our guests frequently. We see our guests, our team members visit guests on the breakfast, visit guests in the lobby. We talk, we ask, we communicate. Again, like I told you at the beginning, it's really heartfelt hospitality. And how we track it is, we have, of course, the software, as everyone knows, uh, we have the online reviews. In our hotels, we have the reviews during your stay, not just after you leave. So during your, le during your stay, you can write, which we get to us, which we can fix and amend any issue or glitch you have. 
In Anantara, we have the Anantara app, which you communicate with our team members or your request all through the app. You don't need to call us. You don't do anything. So this is also part of the business ledger. Your business went on the pool. You want your room to be ready or you're not reached. All you do is use the app and it reaches us and we make sure everything's done. Yeah, brilliant. And listen, I think that's what business guests want, right? The convenience. Um, but I think if we can just shift back to your career for a second, um, a couple of questions. Go ahead. Uh, one I'd like to just understand, has there been a moment in your career where you're like, wow, that was a real challenge, but then you kind of overcame it and it was probably one of the best lessons maybe that you, you learned? Well, there are a lot of challenges I had, but I think COVID was the big one for all of us because it's nothing we would have ever prepared for. And uh, it's tough because I was in Doha back then in Qatar. We had around 570 team members. So uh, it was tough to manage that because everything was, you know, blocked with isolation, um, your, your PCR tests and your, because we had to do a PCR test like every four or five days because we work in hospitality. Uh, people were getting COVID to isolate them, take additional rooms to isolate the team members or the guests. It was a good learning curve because um, we never realized that we would be part, we would see it in movies. We never knew we'd be part of it, but uh, we managed to go through it. We managed to surpass it and we continued and we're booming, you know, business is booming after that, uh, thankfully. And, uh, you know, another one, quick example, uh, time my past was I, when I worked in north of Iraq, we opened a hotel there. I was a hotel management. Logistics was very tough, so we had to fly in a lot of stuff. So that also taught you how to manage and how to deal with the whole hotel, because some flights come, some flights don't come. So that was a that was a very interesting one, actually. On the leadership side, there for for something like COVID, where you know people are kind of maybe nervous, scared, mm -hmm. and they're looking at you. Did mm -hmm. it teach you anything about the type of leader you you are? Or? Again, it's you need to be very approachable for the team, but you need to be very firm on what the policies are because, you know, these are all have done, have been done by the government. And, you know, it was a learning curve again for everyone. We didn't know we did the vaccines, vaccine one, vaccine two, third vaccine and, you know, booster. So we need to, to be firm, but we need to, to make sure that this is to explain for the team members that this is for your well-being as well as our guests well-being. Because when our guests know we didn't handle this properly, they won't trust us in the future. So we need they when we handle this properly, we take care of you, your families, because if you're sick, your family's sick. So we need to take care of you, your families, the guests, therefore, you know, we, we need it to be approachable, but yet really firm to make sure the message is really delivered to the team. Because it's every day new thing used to come up. Don't do this, do this, don't do this, do this. So we had to, you know, adapt quickly, quickly, quickly. Gloves, change gloves ten times a day, you know, masks, housekeeping team, you know, we used to change housekeepers. Some rooms used to just, you know, fog it and, you know, spray it. And I think we all remember it. Yeah, I mean, it's something to remember, not hopefully never again. For sure. Hopefully. You're in a position that, you know, you talked about studying hospitality and tourism yep. back in your, your university days, and you're probably in the position that most students who, who go into hospitality one day want to end up in. If you were to kind of speak to, to a room full of those students now, would there be any pieces of advice that you'd leave them for a successful career oh, in yeah. hospitality? Definitely. I tell them some things that were not taught to me back then. First, my advice to them is be patient. Always be patient, because if you're not patient to where, where you want to get, you're not going to be patient with your guests or your team members if you want to be a job manager or above. Second thing is always be willing to learn and always be willing to listen, because you live and learn from every single team member you have. And be willing to say, yes, you're right, I'm wrong. This is very important and always learn from other success stories in the industry. Sometimes you see somebody has done something in some maybe different country, different city, different same country. It's a good success story that could suit your hotel or property or situation, go for it. And not everything we learn is exactly what it is on the ground. On the ground teaches you more real life situations than the educational situations. Do as much internships as possible go to different departments. The more departments you know, the better and faster and more solid you grow when you become to a general manager position, for example. On the patience part, I think we're all aware that the, the new generation probably lack the patience other generations have. So as leaders, maybe there's an element of 
being aware of that because you have to you have to manage the people that you have today yeah. is there is there something leaders need to do slightly different to manage the expectations and the ambitions of this new generation coming into the workforce because it's different right 100 uh, percent dealing with yeah i mean it's different generation different my advice is always be straightforward you know if somebody's coming and you know you're dealing with a team member that's young ambitious fine help assist put them on the right track on the right program but we also need to be honest straightforward that listen this is how it's done this is how it's going to be this is how you grow this is how it is this this is life hospitality is different than maybe many industries around the world we are we we never close like hospitals i mean i think we're the only two businesses that never close other than airports hotels and we we're always open so there's a lot of space to learn and it's not that quick it's not if you went through one hotel it means it's the same everywhere. So like we were saying, I was in Qasr Sarab, completely different than Banana Island, Qatar, completely different than a city hotel now. So there's a lot of new things, a lot of new things to learn. You have to be very willing to be that, to do that. I remember I did nine months in the kitchen nonstop. See, there you go, there time. you go. I wasn't allowed to do anything the, else, yeah. I didn't spray them. Yeah, I mean, it is part of what it is. Yeah. You learn. Yeah, exactly. You learn. Because when you learn that, if you believe it's basic stuff, it's not basic. Because when you manage that team, you can explain to them how it's done, or you've been there. So it really helps you grow faster and more solid. Just have a few final questions. I think one of them is for the industry, and maybe just, is there any challenges that you think the industry as a whole, maybe even in this region, are facing that if you were sitting down with an industry friend, you'd be like, you know what, I think this, this could be a challenge for us in the next few years. Is there anything that comes to mind when you think of that? I mean, being in this part of the world, I think uh, political status all around us is a big thing for the industry here. You know, it goes up and down based on what's, you know, it could affect us positively. You that in the, in the bookings, in the occupancy? Yeah, yeah, of course. It could affect us positively and it could affect us negatively. So. Political situations all around the world, especially in the area around us, is a big effect on what happens. Again, we realized, I actually did sit with a friend of mine a couple of weeks ago, talk about the same thing. We realized the clientele mindset has changed after COVID. So people have been less patient. And people are expecting more because, you know, you're, we need to make up for what happened during the two years of COVID. People are expecting more. People want more. And we need to be really fast and adapting to the requirements. I mean, me being a business city hotel, pleasure hotel, certain requirements. He's in more of a leisure hotel, so he has different requirements. Of course, our hotels change based on seasonality. So the summer guests are different than the winter guests, people coming for Christmas, different than the corporate guests, different than the Ramadan guests for this city. So you need to be willing to adapt all the time. And clientele do change. Yeah, no, for sure. And then finally, before we get into to it, would there be, you know, a piece of advice just for the industry as a whole? Maybe you see it in other industries and you go, they do that really well. We need to do this better. Like, is there any advice you give to your industry friends and say, yeah, listen to me? Be, uh, be always ready to get out of the box you're used to. Okay. Don't stay in the box you want. You need to expand. Don't assume what you're doing is uh, the only right thing. Listen, watch, be ethical and fair. To the team members, this is something uh, very important. But the, my advice is really get ready to get out of the comfort zone all the time. I mean, comfort zone is a killer. So get out of the comfort zone. It keeps you active. It keeps you younger. And, you know, go for it. Love it. Promise this is the last one. Don't worry, no worries. Future for Anantara downtown. Obviously, you've got some exciting plans. Yep. What do the next few years look like for you, the hotel, and the team? Wow. We're going to have new concept. We're going to be but more better place on the map. We're going to be a real destination hotel. It's coming up. That's a cliffhanger. Yeah, watch up. <laughs> well, keep watching us. Uh, we're coming soon with a lot of changes. Uh, people will get to know that very, very soon. And uh, we're here for you. Again, we're here as a hotel and team members. Team members will grow as a company as well. We're very keen on uh, moving people within the company and to grow within the company. Most of my department heads, I mean, 92% of my department heads are all from within the company. Yeah. Super. Sam, it's an absolute pleasure. Thank you. Thank so you much. for coming. Yeah, really appreciate it. Have a wonderful it. day. Thank you.